Tutorial 5 Message Order and Debugging Introduction This tutorial is focused on message ordering the sequence in which messages are passed from object to object and how objects generate them. We will also use some of the debugging tools in Max to determine how a patch is running. Max patches often seem to have everything happening at once. In reality, messages are produced and acted upon in a specific order. In order to make patches that operate correctly, we need to understand the order in which things occur and how to control complex matrices of actions. Right to left, bottom to top, take a look at the tutorial patcher. This file has a number of small patches that we will use to learn about the rules that messages follow. Click on topmost button in the top left patch. It seems that all three of the connected button objects fire simultaneously. This is an illusion messages are sent down the patch cables in a sequential order. The easiest way to see this in action is to use some of the debugging tools in Max. Select Enable Debugging from the Debug menu or click the Enable Debugging icon at the bottom of the window. Also, ensure that Auto Step is turned off in the Debug menu. Now the top row of patches in the tutorial will have small small red circles with numbers in them covering the patch cords. These are called break watchpoints or just breakpoints. When we activate our patcher, operation will stop at each breakpoint. We can examine the state of things, then continue operation to the next breakpoint. Click on the topmost button in the left-hand patch. Instead of the immediate flash of all the button objects lighting up, the rightmost patch cord shows a message path indicator and animated green circle. In addition, a window opens called the debug window. The debug window tells us that a bang message has been intercepted by a breakpoint. Moreover, it tells us which breakpoint was tripped, the name of the patcher, and what class of object the sending and receiving object was. In this case, both are button objects. Select Step from the debug menu. You will see that the middle cord flashes. Select Step again and you will see that the leftmost cord flashes. Select Step once more to finish our patch trace. When the outlet of an object is connected to more than one inlet, the messages are sent in right to left order. But what happens when the receiving objects are stacked vertically? With debugging still enabled, click on the topmost button in the middle patch on the top row. As the breakpoints fire, select Step from the debug menu. When we step through the patch, we see that the bottommost button receives its message first, followed by the middle, then the top. So, we can see that Max has two levels of ordering, right to left, then bottom to top. There is one more twist to message ordering, and that is the effect of messages that cause more messages to be generated. The third patch illustrates the issue. Turn Auto Step on for this one. Click on the topmost button and watch how messages step from object to object. We see that messages travel all the way to the bottom of one message chain before sending a message to the next patch cord in the branch. Notice that the debug window shows you the entire message chain in a branch. It only clears when a branch has been completed. To summarize, the message ordering rules in Max are 1. Right to left, or bottom to top for objects that are vertically aligned. 2. All actions on a branch are completed before the next branch is activated. Note that for determining the right to left or bottom to top ordering, it is the location of the connected inlet, not the path of the patch cords that determines the message route. As an exercise, create a new matrix of button objects with both vertical and horizontal arrays of button objects and multiple depths of objects. Use comment boxes to number the boxes in the order you think they will fire then trace the patch. Do this until the message ordering becomes second nature. Select Disable Debugging from the Debug menu and let's look at the other patches in the tutorial patcher. More message ordering sometimes it is inconvenient to match the spatial order of the patch with our desired result. In the bottom row of patches, the leftmost patch is well structured, it is cleanly laid out, and has the number messages in ascending numerical order from left to right. If we wanted the messages to happen from low to high, it is also wrong. When we click the top button, we see the numbers come out in reverse order in the Max console. This is because the message boxes are receiving bang messages in right to left order. The next patch shows a corrected version of this patch, using a new object, bang bang. This object takes an incoming message and produces bang messages from its outlets in right to left order. The number of outlets is determined by the argument to bang bang. 
The outlets are connected to the message boxes with crossed patch cords. When we click on button B, the Max console displays the messages in the preferred order. Notice that the outlets of Bang Bang Fire and Right to Left order, mimicking the message ordering of branching patch cords. Most objects with multiple outlets will follow this rule. Outputs are produced in order from the rightmost outlet to the leftmost outlet. Using the Bang Bang object makes the message order explicit. That is, it forces the messages to follow a specific path regardless of spatial orientation and lets us place objects anywhere we want in the patch, knowing that they will be triggered in well-defined order based on which outlets we trigger them from. Another object that provides explicit ordering is the trigger object. The trigger object accepts any input and outputs messages based on its arguments. The arguments determine the number of outputs and set their type, with options of L for list, B for bang, I for integer, F for floating point number, and S for symbol. You can also use specific integers, floating point numbers, or symbols as constant outputs. The next patch contains two message boxes with the integer 90. If we click on the one labeled C, which is connected directly to the print objects, the Max console displays the typical right to left ordering of messages. However, if we click on the message box connected to the trigger object, we see that we can route the patch cords to print in left to right order. The sent messages are all printed as the integer 90, since our arguments for trigger were R of type I. The next patch to the right also uses the integer message 90 and is connected to a trigger object. However, in this case, three different arguments are used. When we click on message box E, we see that the output of the three outlets are all different, matching the difference in arguments. The rightmost outlet, with argument of type I, produces an unchanged 90 output. The middle outlet set to type F casts the incoming message to its floating point equivalent of 90.000000. Finally, the leftmost outlet of type B turns the incoming message into a bang. So, in addition to making the message order explicit, the trigger object can do type conversion of messages. The rightmost patch shows the use of constant values within the trigger object. When we change the floating point box F to any number, the trigger object again converts the incoming number, but also sends a number of symbols that are used as constant values. We also see that the incoming message did not change the output of the bang outlet a bang is a bang, regardless of incoming message type. Now would be a good time to build some more button matrices, combining them with trigger and bang bang objects, and labeling them with their expected message order. The trouble with loops the final patch in our tutorial file is a set of four button objects all interconnected in a loop. When we click on any of the button objects, the system comes to a halt with a stack overflow error. Why did this happen? This circular construction is a feedback loop. One button sends to the next, which sends to the next, which sends to the next, which sends to the first, triggering the cycle all over again. If allowed to continue, these actions would freeze max requiring a force quit and the loss of all unsaved work. When this situation occurs, Max shuts off its scheduler to prevent anything else from happening. Once we've found the problem and corrected it in our patch, we can turn the patch on again by clearing the stack overflow message at the top of the patch. Summary A deep understanding of message ordering rules is necessary to create properly functioning patches. The right to left, bottom to top, Go to the end order is the implicit rule for message passing, but you can use objects like bang bang and trigger to make the ordering explicit. In all cases, however, you need to watch out for feedback loops they are literal patch killers.